Okay, everyone, it is here, Dragon Ball Super Episode 98. Oh, uncertainty, a universe disappears. Gotta get, say, guys, <laughs> this episode was pretty awesome. Halfway going forward. Um, if you guys are watching this already, you guys have seen the episode already and are looking for reviews. And I hope you guys like this one just as a heads up. Uh, wow, yeah, this episode kind of started off a little slow for me, guys. But towards the end, I was my jaw was just dropped, as I'm sure everyone else's was. Um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. I did not expect, I expected it to happen, but not. The mood was crazy, but we'll get more into that once that starts, uh, once we get to that point. But as we left off in the last episode, Goku was about to fight um, against a crew, a group of people from Universe Universe 9. And he did for the most part in the beginning, which was pretty cool. Uh, even every... As always, the Supreme Kai, which I don't understand how they made him so weakly, such a weakling in Super, but I digress about that. He's complaining like, oh, or fearing that it's just the end for Goku. And we kind of does point out like if it's all like, um, <laughs> um, Supreme Kai was saying, why doesn't Goku go straight into blue? And I kind of figured the same thing too. I was like, why doesn't Goku just do this right away? But Whis points gives a perfect example. It's gonna waste his stamina if he wants to stay in this for towards the end. Till the end, he's gonna need that stamina and fights against um, he and Jiren, um, Jiren, and even though those pe other people, the Pride Troopers, um, they're gonna need their stamina. So I kind of like how they said that without um, us guessing you know, or wondering why Goku isn't doing blue. SS blue. Um, so during the fight, we saw the the brothers, the trio, the tacky trio, or what is it called? Um, the nickname is the track attacky trios. Um, that was pretty funny, and um, I gotta say, guys, the Supreme Kai from Universe Nine, I hate him so much. The guy is a total douche to begin with, and. Just, um, I, I feel sorry for Universe 9 that they lost, but if anything came, anything came good out of that universe dying or being erased was that that Supreme Kai died. And if I was other Supreme, Supreme Kais um, watching that universe being erased, I would be sad, but I would be happy that that dude's finally gone. And even his, um, the angel for um, the God of Destruction, which we didn't get a lot of info about him. Um, gotta keep an eye out for him. His his smile threw me off, but I bet he was happy he didn't have to work to deal with him anymore. But, yeah, that's another story for another time. Um, so, Vegeta finally sees Goku um, kind of being pushed back a little bit. And um, as a good partner of Vegeta... Um, he doesn't want to let Goku die. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he wasn't thinking that. It's just me being me. Um, but we fought. We finally saw some teamwork from Universe 7. And, um, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, we, what's it called? Um, I was expecting maybe Gohan to come and help, but we don't know what they're doing right now. So it was good to see Vegeta, the two strongest fighters of Universe um, seven and say what you want about Frieza, he's not the strongest. It's Goku and Vegeta, clearly. Um, with um, Frieza's getting up there. I, I get you, I give you that he's the third strongest, but he is not on Goku or um, Frieza's level. Oh, I'm sorry, Vegeta's level at all. So, say what you want, you're wrong. It ain't gonna happen until we see him actually fight or and Frieza beat Goku or Vegeta. Um, but speaking of Frieza, um, that was pretty funny how he was toying with one of the members of Universe 7 and uh, Universe uh, 9. And the guys are like, forget that, I'm going to jump off. And totally forgetting that if he does, he he gets eliminated. So that was pretty funny once he realizes that he was that he had lost. 
Uh, he's like, oh, shoot, I should have not done that. And then one of the other fighters for Universe, the Universe Line was a quick, oh, hey, I lost too. And she was happy about it. I, was, I thought that was a little funny little joke they did right there. Um, but yeah, as the fight continues, um, the Zenos, man, they... Every time they come, they keep saying it over and over again until they stop being funny. Um, every time they come on, it's just, I always have a smile on my face. Their reactions and the way their language, not their language, the words, their choice of words is pretty funny. So I like that a lot. And then um, we see after one getting, after um, each fight is getting um, tossed out, how they're so into their little tablets, which makes it even funnier. That it, to them, basically, it's all one huge game. Um, they have nothing riding on it, but it's as if they do, and then they're happy that it's happening. Um, so that's pretty funny that they are, um, their reactions are being priceless. At least for me, it's priceless. So I love that. Keep on doing that. And I'm pretty sure we won't get tired of them at all. Um, so we see towards now, towards more of the end. Um, it's just now Vegeta and Goku versus. Um, the trio, the trio, the dangerous trio, I believe it's what it's called. And, um, everyone went, everyone went full out. And of course, Goku and Vegeta, without ease, without any issue, really, um, beat those three guys up with the out the final flash and the Kamehameha, which is pretty cool seeing those, um, seeing those guys to, um, team up and be a universe. Um, but... Really, what I think everyone's going to be talking about is the ending of this episode, which was pretty amazing, guys. Um, it was crazy to see how just the, the tone of once they got eliminated, how the tone of the episode just shifted from like funny, funny and fun with like great music, like, great background music, to completely, like, complete 180 serious, dark music, like, sadness, like, and then we just saw everyone freaking out, at least Universe 9-wise, like, oh, shoot, this is the end, and, like, okay, like, a piece of me feels bad for the King Kai, or the Supreme Kai from Universe 9, but the dude was being a total douche the whole episode. Oh, Universe 9 is going to win. When clearly, the Zenos even say Universe 9 is the weakest out of all the universes. So this guy was just super cocky. He didn't know what he was doing. Um, but he was totally freaking out. I'm not sure if he, was, if he was the one that yelled Zeno or if it was the God of Destruction. Um, I like that God of Destruction, but the dude got, got, that dude has to put his Supreme Kai on check. Um, now he won't, he won't, ever, he won't be able to do that ever, so it doesn't matter anymore, but, um, even they, like, were freaking out, like, they can't believe this is finally gonna happen, and then that transition from them just waiting, and then we transition to the Zenos, like, their animation, like, like, it's a game for them, and it's, it's really, a, like, it's funny and scary to think about that, like, Jesus Christ, these guys just have the power to erase the universe in what five seconds it took us 10 five seconds it's pretty crazy and just the way they did it like it was like it was like fun for them to do which is scary scary to, to think about and then you just saw everyone being erased all the fighters and even the god of destruction um in the universe and even the other the gods of destruction it's just like they didn't realize the the seriousness of it until it finally happened. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, they were probably hoping, like, okay, they weren't going to get a race. But once they saw it, they're like, oh, shoot. And even other fighters, like, they, like, everyone just stopped fighting and, like, just realized it. And then people are going to say, oh, the Grand Peace, the Grand Priest, look at his smile, looking down on everyone. He's the villain. People just stop at that. There's no proof at all in any way that he's a villain like jesus christ it's clearly even stated by Whis. he's one of the top five fighters of all universes this is even someone stronger than him so this whole notion that the grand priest is the strongest and it's all his plan just 
stop it with that, people. Like, I, I'm, I'm hearing this online. And I hate it so much. Like, there's no proof that the Grand Priest is a villain. It's clearly stated, too. And he even, there's no power that he can't do. He has no power over the Zenos. It's the way, the way he reacts to them. It's like he knows his plays. So this notion like, oh, the Zenos are just like a pawn. Like, no, like, just stop it. Until we see it. It ain't gonna happen, guys. So stop with that. So that's a little rant I went on. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm just saying because I know people are gonna throw up. Oh, do you see his face? Like his smile. Just stop it, guys. Like, I'm sure he wants the university race as much as anyone, or at least the Zenos. Um, but just stop it, guys, with that, please. Um, but back to the Zenos. Um, <laughs> I was like, again, guys, the reactions are priceless. And um, I I can't wait to see more of it. Even though I'm, it sucks to say that that we want other universes to die to be erased, but if we could get the Zenos rea reacting the way they are, I'll take it any day. Um, <laughs> so um, we'll see more about that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how the episode ends. Everyone's freaking out. Zenos, the Zenos, both of them erased universe um, nine, and then it, we just end with the angel of universe nine, with a big old grin on his face. Like, I'm curious to know what's gonna happen with them. Like, I know back in the Trunks arc, um, Supreme Kai said that when a god instruction dies, an angel dies. So I'm not sure what how that's gonna play into effect now. Is that was that incorrect info that the, the Supreme Kai was given, or was that just like cat red cannon now, and the the angels just live and live or don't cease, don't cease to exist so for some time until a new god of destruction is um, made. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Um, was Supreme Supreme Kai wrong, or he just his information was wrong? Um. I'll be curious to know how that's going to play out. And, um, or, um, yeah, I, I have a feeling that, you know, that Angel has, we have to keep an eye out for him. Like I mentioned earlier, just keep an eye out for him and we'll see. Um, cause it was weird in a previous episode, just real quick guys, in the previous episodes, he was mad when no one wanted to fight, when Universe 9 was just going crazy and then the, they were trying to recruit people, and he was getting frustrated that they didn't recruit any recruit anyone. So now that the universe is actually erased, I was surprised that he was smiling and kind of not giggling, but you could tell like he was laughing inside. So that, that kind of threw me off. So I'm not sure if you guys um, felt the same way about that, but I'll be curious to know in the comments what you guys think. Um, so yeah, so next episode we are gonna see Krillin. Basically, this is going to be Krillin's episode, which I don't really care. Krillin is one of my least favorite characters of all time in Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Um, just the fact that he's weak. He's really annoying. <laughs> uh, but that's another story for another day. Um, so we'll see how that episode starts or how that episode goes. So hopefully we see a little more fighting. Maybe not from Goku or Vegeta, but more of maybe even some teamwork between um, Gohan and Piccolo. That would be pretty cool to see. So yeah, so guys, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this episode. Um, let me know you guys' predictions for next episode and what you guys hope to see, what you don't hope to see. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. And until then, guys, we will see you on Dragon Ball Super Episode 99 review next week. Peace out.